to your project presentation. My name is Jack Rogers, if you don't know me, and I'm the founder of Neural Investment Company, and I hope you enjoy. First of all, let's start with a little bit about me. I'm a senior here at Grandview, of course, um, and throughout my career here, I've taken a variety of STEM courses, uh, one of which is Intro to Programming, and I also took AP Computer Science A last year, where we learned uh, Java. Um, I also took Tech Ed 1 and 2, which are more mechanical engineering based, SOLIDWORKS based courses, which we made a clock and a CO2 car, which is pretty cool. Um, I'm also a uh, varsity lacrosse captain, and I also play football here. And next year, I will be studying computer science at C. Boulder. Just go Bows. <laughs> so, a little bit about the project inspiration here. I knew I can't. Or I knew coming into this project, I want to do something with programming. And I also want to implement some business because that's one of my other passions. Um, I'm really into entrepreneurship as of recently, and it's my goal to own my company one day in the future. Um, I also was very curious about machine learning and AI and neural networks. I just think the idea that a computer program can kind of um, function sort of kind of like our own brains is very interesting. Um, I'm also interested in the stock market. I really wanted to learn about the intricacies of the market and what makes the stock go up, what makes it go down, etc. So right here, I think this is an interesting diagram of a piece of a neural network. As you can see, it's similar to a neuron of our own brain. It takes an input, it has a bias, and it spits out an output, kind of like our neurotransmitters work and spit through our neurons. And then this is just a movie that I kind of found some inspiration from. Many of you guys have seen it. It's called The Big Short, and it's about the crash of the housing bubble in 2008. I just thought it was really interesting financially because I didn't know like what caused the crash of 2008 before. Um, but this movie really goes into it and kind of puts a really interesting spin on it. Lots of good actors in it, and I really recommend it. Now to the, what my project actually is. I wanted to create a stock trading platform that uses machine learning to make predictions on whether an investor should buy, hold, or sell a certain stock. Uh, I want to gear this towards swing trading, which is trading on a day to day to about a month time frame. So pretty short term trades. You're riding the swings of the market, that's why it's called swing trading. Um, stocks go up and they rebound, or go down and they rebound to their trend, so you're just riding those swings. <coughs> And I wanted to use this as a tool to give investors confidence in their decisions. This wasn't meant to be um, a tool to strictly um, like buy and sell um, without any other background research, but this is just to, um, to be used as like an extra confidence boost for your um, decisions to make uh, positions. And then into my project objectives for this year, I really wanted to understand and implement machine learning concepts because I found them fascinating and I really wanted to make a project that I could learn along the way, which I did do a lot of learning. I also wanted to practice and apply my programming skills. Um, of course, I'm going to be majoring in computer science, so I just wanted to set myself up a little bit better for my future in that. I also wanted to comprehend the processes by which stocks move and how the market ultimately works. Coming into this, I knew basically nothing about the stock market. Um, to the untrained eye, it looks just like a bunch of lines and numbers and a bunch of nonsense, but there's actually some, uh, there's some sense to it. Also, I want to become a more natural and competent public speaker. I don't know if you guys have known me in the past, but public speaking is not my thing, so hopefully I'm getting better at that right now. And also I want to gain confidence in my abilities to make a project that I can apply in the real world. Up to this point, I've never actually made a project that I can really apply besides like 
school research projects. So this was really a good learning, good learning uh, experience for the future. Let's, let's talk about my company logo. Okay. So coming into this, I decided to pick a nice light blue color. Um, blue represents trust, stability, intelligence, and confidence. I just think it's a very clean color that just strikes dependability. And it's just very appealing to the eye, in my opinion. Um, also, if you see the kind of lines and webs of this. Um, the user creativity kind of looks like the neural network. Um, the slopes up and down resemble the trends of the stock market, so I think it just kind of resembles those user imagination a little bit. On to my advisory committee, my expert advisor is Stephen Hutt. He is a graduate student at CU Boulder, and he's specializing in artificial intelligence. Steven's been a huge help for me, guiding me in the right direction, and it's been an honor to have him on my team. Thank you for coming, Steven. My support advisors, Kay Johnson. I've been friends with Kay Johnson since elementary school. We grew up in GT together, done a variety of projects together. Kay is really someone I can look forward to with for advice and He's always there. Julian, also one of my good friends from elementary school. I've known Julian forever. We used to be in Boy Scouts together, and it's been a blast having him on my team. He's been a help in guiding me in the right direction as well. Both those guys are great for moral support and just having friends by your side back me. And Aaron Rogers, my last support advisor, my mother. She's been helpful in just guiding me in the right direction, supporting me, motivating me to get my stuff done, and. <laughs> Had I had any uh, financial needs, she probably would have been there for me. <laughs> Hopefully. So, on the neural networks, this was kind of the first concept I started researching. Kind of without even researching the stock market, I just wanted to dive into neural networks. I just found them fascinating. So, just a little bit about neural networks. Um, you have these inputs here that are going to direct an output. And each of these inputs has a certain bias, which is basically the strength that it affects the, the next layer. Um, it also has a weight here, which is basically the strength of the connection. Um, I'm hoping I'm explaining that well, but basically you fine tune these weights and biases and try to satisfy um, a cost function. Um, which is basically a whole lot of math and linear algebra, which I didn't get really into the nitty gritty of it, but I found it fascinating. Um, coming into this, I was familiar with Java because I took AP Computer Science A. Um, Python was a new program, new language to me, and uh, it honestly wasn't too hard to learn because the syntax is really simple compared to other languages. Um, it is also very popular for machine learning and it's very popular today. And my IDE or integrated development environment I use, which is basically just where I program and uh, where it spits out my outputs, I use PyCharm. And of course, this is my first time using PyCharm, but I got used to it pretty quick and it was very, very useful to me. Now, into Python for finance. I stumbled upon a YouTube tutorial that was titled Python for Finance, and it really got into the graphing of data from outside data sources, uh, such as candlestick graphs, OHLC stands for open, high, low, close, which is basically, if you imagine a candle with a wick on the bottom and top, you got the high, the low, and then the open and the close, depending on if the stock closed above or below the previous lower um, With that, I use the matplotlib module, which the module is basically just a bunch of functions or pre-written code from outside sources which add functionality to your program without um, just coding it from scratch. Um, this was very helpful. It took a, took a lot of busy work out of 
actually programming it because it's built for graphing, so that was a huge help. Um, when I started this Python for Finance tutorial, um, the person doing the tutorial started with Yahoo Finance, which sounded perfect and easy because I could just follow the tutorial, but I soon realized that the data only went up to about 2017, so it had been depreciated since then, so that wasn't going to work for my purposes. And then I tried Google Finance, which I was like, oh, okay, this can be promising, but also depreciated. <laughs> Um, and then I found IEX, which is, stands for Investors Exchange, which is just daily stock info, daily historical info. That was a huge help since I finally found one that was actually working and not broken, so that was great. And then here is the candlestick chart that I first made. It is of Tesla stock um, from 2010 to 2017. And this is the volume. So the volume is how many stocks are being traded at a given time. So right here, there's a lot of buying and selling going on. Um, if you're not familiar with the candlestick graph, the green indicates that the um, open or the closed price uh, is higher than the open price. And these little um, wicks, if you can see them, that would be the low of the period and then a high of the period, um, say it's right there. So these are really useful because it comprises lots of information into like one cohesive graph and um, this is kind of what you think of when you think of stocks. So this was pretty cool to see that my data was actually working, I was importing it and it's pretty, pretty nice to look at. So, and then on to the next part of the finance tutorial, um, I made a correlation chart for the whole S&P 500, um, which I'll show you in a second. Um, correlation charts, um, let's go ahead and show you right now. Um, they're very useful in deciding how you're going to diversify your portfolio. You're not going to want a bunch of stocks that are highly correlated in your portfolio, or else if you're wrong, then you're wrong in lots of different positions. So the green here represents a positive correlation. So let's say this company and this company those would be very correlated. So you probably would not want to invest in both of those. And red is the opposite. That is a negative correlation. So say this one and this one. Those have a pretty red negative correlation. So those, in theory, if one goes up, you're going to expect the other to go down. So you might want to buy a couple of those to make sure if you're wrong, you're not completely wrong. And like I said, I originally had the whole S&P 500 on this. If you can imagine 500 little tickers along here, it's pretty cramped. So this is a zoomed in version. It's actually usable instead of a bunch of jumbles of letters. So I thought that was pretty cool. Um, I also did a quick um, overview introduction to this platform called Quantopian. This is a backtesting platform for trading algorithms. So if you've heard of like algorithmic trading, that's where you have an algorithm that has certain conditions where you'll buy and certain conditions where you'll sell. I spent probably a week or two just looking through this. And um, I plugged in a very basic algorithm. I think it was a simple moving average crossover strategy. But as you can see, this is the rewards. And it looked like it was going pretty good until here. <laughs> and then it goes down a little bit. So obviously, I would make a more cohesive, more complex algorithm if I was uh, actually using this, but I just found this tool to be very interesting and in fact they have like a, um, you can apply uh, for grant money I believe from Quantopian depending on how your algorithm performs. So assuming you uh, make a very uh, accurate algorithm then you could get funding for it and actually make it into something useful. 
After this point, I really felt the pressure to start working on the actual graphics of a legit program. And this is something I've never done before. In the past, I've just had programs where I have an input, an output, and an output in the console. So <coughs> making an actual program with like buttons and drop-down menus was something new to me. So this was a pretty big learning curve, but I feel like I uh, found some good experience in it. And GUI stands for Graphical User Interface, basically just the graphics of the program, the buttons, the drop-down menus, the entry, um, entry boxes where we can type information. And for this, once I said, like I said, first time doing graphics, I used the tkinter module, which is another module for uh, Python. This module made it really easy to make buttons and windows and frames. Because uh, you really just type in like tk dot uh, button and then write in the text and where you want the button you put. It's very easy and it's pretty intuitive. And I started doing my GUI pretty late in the semester. So this is um, a skeleton for a GUI that I made. So I programmed this whole top menu. These all have some drop down functionality, but it's lacking the um, main functionality I wanted to get to put in there, unfortunately. But I did um, end up making a live graph. Um, this is a on um, a few days time frame, but I did have it set to a daily time frame. So uh, in that case, this price would be updating throughout the trading day. Like on the weekend, there wouldn't be any. The uh, stock market's closed, so there would be no data. But um, yeah, this I programmed this to update every 20 seconds. I had it doing like one second, but you can imagine loading a new graph every second is pretty hard on your computer. And I also include volume here. It's not the prettiest graph, but it is definitely a start into combining Matplotlib as well as tkinter. So a little closer view of the drop-down menus. Uh, I, all, I programmed these all myself, and I included certain things like I wanted to change like the certain exchange you were trading within, like S&P 500, Nasdaq, and whatnot. I also wanted to make a simple way to change the data frame. So like if you want to trade on like a month time frame or a year time frame. And then also the open high low close interval, I want to change that and change it from tick data to one minute, 15 minute, 30 minutes, and whatnot. I also wanted to include top, middle, and bottom indicators. The top indicator would go above the graph, bottom would go below it, and the middle would go on top of the graph. So let's start with the middle. The middle would be a simple moving average or an exponential moving average. Those are basically, if I had to sum it up, it's you take, let's say it's a 50 day moving average, you take the 50 days before that trading day and average them into a line. Um, and lots of traders like to use those simple moving averages in what's called crossover strategies. So say one moving average moves above another, that might be your entry point to buy, and then once it moves back down below, it might be your chance to sell. So I really anticipated using one of those crossover strategies um, just to keep it simple, but I didn't end up getting functionality for that, unfortunately. I also wanted a trading menu where you can do like manual trading or like set up automated trading. Um, this is a lot of information that I am going to need to explore in the future, but um, all things considered, like coming in with no stock market in, like information or knowledge. I'm pretty proud that I actually like know what an indicator is. Like in here I've in the top indicator, bottom indicator, I have what's called a MACD and an RSI. A MACD is a momentum indicator which basically indicates where like if stocks gaining momentum, you might want to look into taking position. And then RSI is relative strength index, which just basically sees how many it calculates some amount of how much volume people are trading with and basically just covers the general strength of the stock. 
So I added all these functionalities, but I actually didn't um, get very much done. I, um, the GUI was really through a curveball, I mean, because it's not something I've ever done before. So I'm pretty proud that I actually made something that looks somewhat of a program. I hope that <laughs> you agree, but let's get into my time. So October, I really didn't know what I was doing. I had like a vision and my end goal, but I had no way to know how to get there. So originally I started learning Python and Code Academy, which was very simple and I quickly found out Python wasn't that complicated to learn. And I also was reading this online book called Neural Networks and Deep Learning, which is a big book by this very smart uh, computer scientist. And it was honestly very complicated. I didn't really understand it, but um, there were some things I took from it. It was pretty interesting, but it was super long, and I just didn't see it taking me anywhere. So in November, I ended up stopping reading that book. It was just taking up too much time. And then I started working on tutorials that I got from my expert advisor, Stephen Hutt. Thank you very much for those. <coughs> Um, so once I cut through, I cut out those uh, reading assignments, um, I was just working through tutorials trying to get my feet wet with uh, machine learning and whatnot. Um, and then a little later in the month, I also wanted to research how I could implement stock data into a program that can analyze it with machine learning. Getting into December, um, of course the reading assignments are cut out. Um, I kept researching uh, the stock market. I watched endless hours of YouTube videos because I just found them kind of fascinating. But um, I did a lot of research there to understand like what exactly I was talking about in the first place. And then I started um, experimenting with Python and machine learning. Um, I did some pretty basic machine learning, but it wasn't very uh, accurate. It wasn't using much, um, many factors, so it really wasn't too useful. But I did kind of get my feet wet once again, and um, uh, I pretty much um, I analyzed Apple stock. So I ran, I cut um, timeline of Apple stock into. Uh, training data, the testing data, and then I ran whether, I basically sought out to predict whether you should buy, sell, or hold, indicated by uh, one, negative one, and zero respectively. And I ended up getting about like a 37% accuracy rate, which isn't terrible if you consider the volatility of the stock market. That's about, it might be a little better than random guessing, so it's, something respectable, but there's lots more that I have to research to go into it. So I continued, actually this is when I stumbled upon the YouTube tutorials from this YouTuber named Sendex. He was super helpful, very um, good at explaining things, and I could basically follow his code, but um, change it for stocks. So he was making a Bitcoin trading platform, so I basically had to adjust accordingly. So of course I was taking data from a stock exchange instead of a Bitcoin exchange. But it ended up working pretty well with a lot of roadblocks, you can assume, but um, it was very helpful nonetheless. So in January, I really wanted to start programming. Um, I really wanted to get closer towards like a finished product. Um, so the first couple weeks of January were pretty uneventful because we had to prepare for our video presentations. Um, and then towards the end of January, I started trying to define my problem with variables in detail because before then I was pretty like vague about uh, the whole definitions of the whole problem itself. And then I began pre-processing data. I thought it was going to be from Google Finance, but it turned out that was appreciated, so I used IEX. And I began uh, taking data from 
those files called JSON files, which are basically just big lists of text and numbers. So uh, you have to kind of sift through those files to get your get down to the data you really want. So I learned how to do that and began doing that by the end of January when I started my framework for a So throughout this process, I made a whole bunch of different files doing different things because I get to a point and then I'm like, okay, this is kind of doing one thing I want, but it's kind of not a good starting point for the rest of the functionality I want. So I kind of just ended up doing all kinds of graphing functionality in different pieces. So uh, there's that for January. And then into February, uh, I continued just programming and grinding on my YouTube tutorials, trying to get past me uh, obstacles. And then by the middle of February, I started um, I started uh, getting into GUI and the graphics. Um, I didn't really start uh, creating the final program until a little bit later, but I had uh, other programs with sample GUIs that I was just learning from, creating, say, buttons, different colored backgrounds, different toolbars and drop-down menus, etc. Into March, I was pretty much feeling the pressure. I was pretty stressed out because I pretty much knew there was no way I was going to actually implement machine learning into a program that can actually make predictions, unfortunately. But I was happy that I did get some experience with that. So there is some, uh, some progress there. So throughout March, I really just grinded on my front page GUI, and I eventually wanted to implement my graphing functionality into the GUI, which I did um, to some extent with that Apple GUI stock you saw. And then into April, it was really crunch time. I was just trying to churn out as much stuff to show for my project as possible. Um, originally, I was trying to make it user friendly, which uh, I guess you could consider a skeleton of a GUI user friendly, except there's no functionality really. But um, I completed the framework for the front page, and I tried to implement other sorts of graphs, but I kind of ran into roadblocks because he was using a, um, the dude I was doing the tutorials for, he was doing a Bitcoin data and his data was, um, it included uh, date and time information that was in a different form than what my JSON files were, so I kind of had a hard time getting around that. I eventually did come to a solution, but, uh, that's that. And then late April, of course, I'm preparing for this presentation and getting as much of my progress documented and trying to show that I did make some progress even though my final outcome wasn't necessarily as I anticipated. So some major roadblocks along the way. Of course, I mentioned learning Python. That's it's not the easiest thing when you have to learn a whole new programming language, but like I said, it wasn't a huge roadblock. Um, of course, I had data source troubles, which was probably one of my bigger struggles because, uh, of course, I started with Yahoo Finance, found out it was depreciated. Google sounds promising, it's got the Google name, and of course, I was depreciated too, so I finally found one a little later in the year. Um, staying on a set research path, um, it's very easy to go on tangents in a project like this where you really don't have much of a ground to start with. So I found myself just trying to expose myself to as much information as possible on my own time. Uh, but bringing it into like a cohesive program was another story. So I went on lots of tangents, but I think this was necessary in the research process because process, there's like, there's really no way to know like exactly which, um, which way to research is the right way especially in computer science. And then another huge hurdle uh, was just understanding how the stock market worked. I had no previous experience. I've never invested money uh, before this. And I just had to learn what makes stocks go up, what makes it go down, uh, 
what all these indicators are, these crazy graphs, what are all these colors. So I've learned qu quite a bit about that and I started uh, paper trading with TD Ameritrade accounts. So I'm starting to get my feet wet in the whole financial stock market sector. Um, I also downloaded this program called, uh, it's called Thinkorswim and it's a, a graphing analysis tool, I guess you could say, for stocks. So you can add your own moving averages, SMA, or EMAs, RSIs, MACDs, uh, all sorts of indicators that I don't know about yet, but that was pretty cool. Um, and then, of course, lots of complicated subject area. This is a pretty ambitious project, but uh, I just try to learn as much as possible from all the little uh, subtopics, machine learning, computer science, investing, uh, there's a lot of stuff going on here. So I just try to learn as much as possible and I'm pretty happy with what I got. Major takeaways from my project, although I didn't come out with the exact complete program that I wanted in the beginning, I did uh, expand my experience a lot. I learned so much about uh, investment and trading and quite a bit about machine learning even though I really have to scratch the surface on that. Also learned a new programming language which is just another tool in my toolkit going into college. So I'm just excited that I finally completed a project that is more or less cohesive and useful for the future and I'm excited to do another project like this hopefully in college. Here's my bibliography. Are there any questions? Any questions? So did you uh, do any mock investing with your software to see if it work? I mean, um, it, I didn't really have much like prediction okay. uh, functionality. So really all I had was graphs, but the Thinkorswim platform has like way more advanced stuff as you can imagine. So I really use that to kind of understand like what sort of strategies work, what doesn't work. I did do some paper trading, but not very successful yet, <laughs> but I'm, <laughs> I'm learning, so. Any other question? So if you were to do the whole project, what would you use to keep yourself on the track? Um, I'm not sure there's too much I could have done because it's kind of just like jumping in the water and you don't really know where you're going, but um, I would probably just try to learn as much about each individual thing as possible um, before bringing it together. I kind of rushed into the programming side just because I was excited and I wanted to do some like stuff I found interesting and fun. So I guess just kind of take my time and kind of cover the bases for each subject. Do you have any advice for future senior project students about if you could do this again? Would you? work on your own again or would you consider a partner just because your topic was so broad? Um, I did consider a partner. I was going to work with Cade. Um, we didn't have a project idea in mind, but he's more of a mechanical engineering kind of mind. But we ended up straying away from that early on because we knew we were going a different paths. So I would probably consider